This is issue number 47 for the Kaiju Engine, where we are going to see about relinquishing some time back to the OS, um, because we have an infinite loop inside of the C code for doing events and all that sort of stuff where it's waiting on a um, the shared memory to be written to. And before we do that, uh, we're going to have to solve our problem where when we run, we have a problem where our program crashes after a certain amount of time and it looks to be one of the GL calls. Now, the the most likely culprit to this is how Go uh, deals with its threads and, and its main and all that other stuff. Um, Go provides you a special function. Yeah, there's the crash. Go provides you a special function we're going to try out. I'm pretty sure this is going to solve it um, for locking the OS, the, the main thread to the OS, or the, your, the thread to the OS that's currently running. So we'll do that in a an init function here, right when main starts. Um, we'll just say runtime dot lock OS thread. So uh, having saving issues. I have this problem sometimes where the Go formatter or whatever takes six billion years to save. Um, but anyways, lock on OS thread, uh, you'll see that it's useful um, for calling the, the current, uh, the Go routine on its current operating system thread and basically keeps it to it and doesn't, doesn't bounce around. And you often use this with reading libraries and, and that sort of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and run now. I will leave it for, uh, I'll let it run for a bit. And while it's running, just to make sure it's not crashing, we're going to take a look at our process here. You'll see that our process is taking up quite a bit of CPU time. If we wait, uh, you'll see that it kind of bounces around. Uh, it goes down, it goes up, and it has the potential to, to just sit there and burn on the CPU. Now, this may not be a problem currently, but we're going to set up a little bit of code for freeing up some of that time. And some of that time might also be taken up um, inside of VS Code here. Uh, perhaps it doesn't look like it's we have any processes here. So yeah, you'll see it's jumping up to like 11%. It gets pretty high. So we're going to see if we can bring that down. And notice it didn't crash, so that's good. So what we're going to do is go to the Win32 uh, dot h file and in our spin lock which actually happens inside of the windowing dot h we have this um let's see where is it uh, shared memory wait for available so here's our spin lock where it's constantly just sitting here and this is going to eat up some more cpu time for no reason so we're going to put in some code for uh, our Unix system and our and our Win32, uh, so that we can free up some of that time. So if defined Win32 or Win64, else, uh, and if we're doing it up here because obviously the function itself is uh, is uh, inside of this header. Of course, we can prototype this and write it individually on each platform. Um, you know, which might be nicer. I don't really want to write this while loop twice. I could define it. I guess there's a bunch of different ways we can kind of goof with this. Um, here we'll do. We'll do it. Define. Uh, we'll call this input event. I'll just call this yeah input events spin lock. And we'll just define it to this code here. Well, if we do that, then the interior is going to be kind of goofy. Um, it's fine. All right, for now, just we'll just continue doing what we're doing. Um, we're going to include windows.h. Otherwise, we're going to include pthread.h. So from here, we can take the same if block I kind of wanted, hmm. yeah, just to keep, I think just to keep this stuff split, because it's, it's kind of annoying. Um, let's open up 
X11 and see if it already includes pthread. It doesn't, so we can include pthread here. And we'll just get rid of that and make this as a prototype. And um, deal with it from there. So here inside of window.h, we'll put it at the top uh, where it's no longer a prototype. And here we're going to do sleep zero, I believe. I believe if we put zero here, Windows just takes this thread and puts it at the bottom of the thread stack. So it just it relinquishes some time, but we're not giving it a certain amount of milliseconds because we do want it to run as fast as you know possible, but not just sit there eating up the CPU time. Um, so now we can copy this guy, go to the X11 code and drop it in up here. And this one is going to be uh, S-C-H-E-D yield. And that should, um, well, this for sure does that, that, what I just explained where it pops it off to the bottom of the uh, thread stack that it, that's currently running. I think Windows does the same. I'm not sure. Probably does. Uh, we'll find out. So now let's make sure this compiles. Okay, so it compiled and here it is running. So I suspect our, uh, when I first open this, it jumps up really high. So let's see where this kind of lands. This is still, this is taking up more time. Uh, let's let it idle. No, doesn't seem to be doing what I want it to be doing. We're not really doing much work at all. And of course, uh, we're not v-blanking or anything like this. We're just trying to render as fast as possible. So that could be partly why uh, we're having some of this issues. So let's, what happens if I do a sleep one? What's the big difference? Of course, this is a millisecond. I really don't want to put in a time. I just prefer to go to the bottom of the stack, free up some CPU resources. I guess I didn't need to close the task manager there. Now, this is a goofy way to do the CPU time, but yeah, now we've got the really low CPU time because obviously we're freeing it up, but this may be an optimization that we have to come back and, and mess with. I want to look at the API docs for sleep on Windows and see what it's doing. So obviously this is much nicer, but of course we're arbitrarily, arbitrarily wasting a millisecond. It's a full millisecond there. Okay, so in Windows, I actually found a switch to thread function. Um, so let's try that one instead of the sleep here. Switch to thread. I don't think it takes any arguments. Okay, so that's still running. Seems like it's still functional. Now let's see kind of what this guy does. Still seems to be trying to eat up a lot of CPU time in here. Of course, uh, we can use other tools to, for profiling the CPU, but this is a primitive one we kind of work with. This, so sleep zero may do the same exact thing because this thing is just eating up CPU and we don't need it to. So let's see if we can work out what we want to do for sleeping. Okay, well, so what's interesting is when we just do the while loop, the compiled code or the operating system are seem to be aware of what I'm trying to do here. And it seems to actually schedule the task better in some cases. See, I'm, I'm dipping below 1% with an infinite while loop, uh, which is interesting. Of course, I don't want it to sleep, like I said, because we want to be able to render as fast as possible. But these fluctuating values are also 
you know, not the greatest. You're sitting here, you know, cooking 12, 10, whatever, sometimes almost 20% of your CPU, um, literally doing nothing but drawing a triangle right now. Hmm. So it's idling. It seems like it's starting to idle in the high 15% or so in general. So at least this was doing a little better. Um, so this might be what we have to go with for now until we can find a better scheduling uh, technique for the CPU time. So let's see what this one jumps around with. Yeah, it's a little bit lower, but sometimes also higher. So it doesn't look like it's making a huge difference. And it could also because, be because nothing else is running on this um, CPU that this is this is bound to. And so there's no other tasks to go to to do work. OK, uh, so I was just reading some more stuff uh, related to Windows scheduling here. So what we could do is whenever we say that we're waiting on available, we know that we are going to be doing, we're going to be waiting um, for some arbitrary amount of time. And who knows what that could be. Now, this does, this wait for availability could take, could actually be pretty quick because we do have some back and forth on shared memory available. Um, so something we can do here is we can say if uh, SM even uh, EVT write state, actually I can just copy this since this keeps bouncing around like a maniac. Um, and we don't want to use shared, we want to say uh, written. So when we have written, which is the long wait, we can do um, set thread priority get current thread, and we don't want it to be the highest. We actually want it to be uh, lowest. So let's try lowest. Now there is an idle, and I don't know how slow that is. So it could um, it could be too, too slow. We can play around with that, though. So now let's check out what we're looking at here. OK. Okay, so now looks like we're a little bit lower than we were before, which is nice. We've kicked down by a little bit. Okay, so let's see what happens when we go to idle, which is a super low. Uh, low profile state. I think it's just priority idle. Yeah, idle. Let's try that one out. Okay. So we'll give it a second to think about it. Now, uh, my fans definitely are not kicking in like crazy. Now we're hitting a much better rate. Um, I don't know if this is going to be, I mean, this is, this is a good rate actually. So we might actually, actually be happy with this, but we need to set our priority back to normal um, if we have set it to being low. So we'll say, um, I wonder if there's a git current thread priority git thread priority yeah so this returns a what is a return returns an int okay so int priority and then down here we can just set the priority back to what it was before we came in here so that may kick our cpu usage up a little bit and we're setting this thread, thread priority every time we come in after we've written, um, which is multiple times per second. I don't know if that's going to have 
a negative effect, but that might just be something for future Brent to work out. So here, let's see what our what we're looking at. We are still lower than the upwards to 20% that we were seeing before. But okay, yeah, we're not we're not going down and seeing that one to two percent. And honestly, do we need this window thread to be any higher than than something in that realm? I don't know. I think it's gonna. I I do want us to run as fast as possible. Um, there we go. Now we're getting some lower numbers. So maybe this is okay for now. And we can kick it lower with a little bit more um, of a better algorithm for thread priorities. Or if we can find a way to, to share mutexes between um, go and see, that might be another option. But we've already cut it down from like the high, the high teens, close to 20%, down to 5 and below. So I think, oh, it's going up. Maybe it's because I moved my mouse up here. But I think that is going to be good enough for now to mess with. Our final option would just be to set the thread priority to something like idle or low and see how how bad it is because we're really just pumping through the Windows messages. My only fear is that when we go to query those messages and we go peek, we lose the we lose the thread from running and the operating system kicks off to some other program and then comes back and there, that happens multiple times and it may be kind of slow. So I think this is okay for now. And then we'll come back to, to modifying it a bit. Now for um, our X11 systems, we may have to do something similar, um, but that'll just have to be through testing. For the most part, um, I think we're good here. Okay, so I'm going to do a small bit of cleanup. Um, I'm just going to prototype a function, uh, void platform, um, what do we call it? Uh, basically, this functionality, we can, we can say, we can have a can shared mem set uh, thread priority and shared mem we'll say um, wait so then we can have something like this guy Uh, wait, SM, set prior, thread priority, SM. Um, the only thing is we won't have the reset uh, because it may, it may not be whatever is, it is on X11 systems, it might not be an int. Um, but it likely will be, honestly. So we'll have Sermon reset thread priority. This is an int. Make this take in an int. Reset SM and priority. And then we implement these two, or sorry, these three over here, which might be uglier, honestly, just because of how it turns out. But switch thread is going to be. Oh no, switch so it's going to be here, and reset is going to be here. And we'll copy these, go to X11, and we will paste. This yield goes here, get rid of that. 
we're going to do nothing here and we're going to return zero here because I don't know if we're going to need to do this uh, stuff. And honestly, it may have to relate to, to setting up a thread on, on Linux. Um, so we'll just have uh, to do here, get cur current thread on uh, thread priority and set the set the current thread priority priority to idle okay and then we're gonna have a a to do um, set the current thread priority to the given priority and that's basically all we're gonna do there so I, I think that we'll leave them as those. so now we've split it up into these three um, internal functions that we fill out on either one and this becomes just these okay so now we have the while loop and, and what we're doing the logic out here and then the ability to mess with them directly on the platform itself cool some may say that's uglier than it was uh, but I think it's a little more readable when you come to look at this function uh, and we should probably call this um, lower thread priority no that's fine it's all about shared mem we're not doing anything else with these files cool I think I'll leave it there and then figure out the minutiae later